Hello Cancer. Welcome to Leo season. I'm Elizabeth Ashley, the secret healer. Welcome to my channel, List of Essential Oils and their uses and welcome to Leo season. So I don't always look like this. <laughs> I just thought I'd bring the sun out today because I wanted to do you a reading for August 2020 and I'm using the Tongue of the Trees cards. This is they. These are cards that I designed with a Hungarian aromatherapist called Gagle Helodi, and they are designed to bypass the conscious mind and speak to the unconscious to find out what it needs to be able to navigate challenges and opportunities over the next few weeks. So I've had a look at the astrology. I've got a very good inkling of what's going on. I can see that my cards back to front in all different ways, but still we'll deal with that in a minute. Let's have a look. No. <laughs> so, Cancer. I'm Cancer. What we're going to get, what we're going to get. Angelica. Sweet marjoram. Card number three, Myrtle. I can tell you. These don't have very really happy oils, guys. Those. But at least there's some comfort. Eucalyptus. Pettigran. Consciousness. That's the first time that's come out. I thought that that would come out more. Vetiver. Black pepper. Ylang Ylang. So that's nine. Ten. German chamomile. Eleven Roman chamomile. We do need to take a chill pill here. Cinnamon. Mm, trust. And our last card. Oh, Melissa. <laughs> of course. Joy. Well, that's a nice outcome because it's going to be a very tense month, Cancer. How did you find eclipse season? So we've got, we had um, all of this activity of startings, endings, explosions in Cancer Capricorn. And um, we've gone through a lot, a long journey for about two years, haven't we? So I'm glad to see the back of that. I'm extremely glad to see the end of Mercury retrograde. <laughs> and also Venus retrograde. But following that now, we will have soon Mars retrograde. And so it's important that we exploit all of the opportunities we can before that starts to happen. It's going into shadow. It's going, um, and so it, it's losing its power. And obviously that's the time of aggression and motivation and ambition and all of that great stuff. However, every there's no good or bad in astrology. There just is and uh it just is mars energy and that energy is explosive warrior energy and as it goes through this month it's going to co uh, create a very tense aspect with two different um, things firstly with the black moon which we'll talk about when i turn around and we talk about the cards what is the black moon but also it'll um, create a tense aspect with all of this stuff that's going on in our seventh house. Um, we've already got Saturn and uh, Jupiter and Pluto there, which is causing all manner of disruption right across the planet for things like uh, with the coronavirus, with the riots, all of this restriction and lockdown. <sighs> and now we're going to have another planet in there as well, interfering with it even further. It's going to be explosive. And so to see these here, this is nice stuff because there's a lot of tapping into the good stuff that happens with Mercury and, uh, and Venus. And there's lots of good stuff, but there's also some really cal calming, tranquilizing stuff. Lots, lots, lots of chamomile. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this round for you to have a look at and we'll do the reading. And then after that, what I'll do is I'll put some slides up with the recipes that I create 
so that you can see correct blending and dilution. I'll do all the hard work for you. So let's turn it around so you can see. Hello Cancer. Well, regular viewers and readers of my books will know that I'm invested in this reading because I am Cancer Aries Rising. So this one and my Aries reading and also my Virgo reading because I'm a Virgo moon always have a lot to tell me. And uh, this one is particularly interesting, I think, because when I saw the oil, the cards come out, they said one thing. But when I put them together with the astrology, they read as a different thing. So let me first show you the spread. So this is card number one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's 10, 11, 12, 13. So where we come in is usually... This card and this card, I find. This usually talks about what we are now. So does this one. And here is our outcome. So you couldn't have got a nicer card, really, for the outcome. Melissa, funnily enough, I'm working hard back on my Melissa book after really skiving for many, many months. Just doing a bit here, a bit there. And then now I've really put some energy behind it. So it's really funny to see that one come out for me. But... I'll go through the meaning of that card in a minute. So let me show you what it looks like just reading the cards. I always read uh, Angelica as beginning of, the, of something new because it's ruled by Pisces, Aries cusp. Pisces being the end of the old life, the beginning of the new. The cusp, we're on the cusp of something new. And I always say, see the stem? That stem there is that moment where something changes and we're in that, yeah? And remember that, Angelica tends to come out when you're experiencing trauma. So you would, um, it's one of the oils that I use for hospice work, for example. I always use that example because it's extreme where you've got somebody who has to transition to whatever the new state is. And you have the people who are left behind who are also going into a new world without that person. And the fear that goes with that, the wanting to hang on to the past, the not knowing, the uncertainty, the doubt. Mm. Yeah, just that, those feelings of just, I really am worried, I'm, I'm fearful of what the future holds and I'm fearful of this moment. This moment is confusing and un unfamiliar. And whilst I really don't want to hold on to it because it's terrifying, letting go is worse. So for that to come out as the first card, I thought, uh oh. <laughs> and then we read these. If I were to do it from a point of view of essential oils. So I give um, sweet marjoram to um, I use it for getting your body clock right. For not being able to sleep. I also use it for people who are very, very upset. Also followed by myrtle, which is also an oil I use for people who are very upset. But also from a physical point of view, it is very good for coughs. So straight away I was thinking, oh goodness me, what's heading our way here? <laughs> and then we're followed by rose, which is nurturing um, for grief. It's a bit of a scary uh, um join but trust me when we see it lay, laid over the um astrology we'll be able to read it in a much different way so don't worry about that um but also this is sleep this is sleep this is sleep this is sleep uh these are sleep are you sleeping i'm not <laughs> so that's interesting to see that come out authenticity is the word that's at the bottom of uh, eucalyptus pettigran is consciousness right so here this to begin with looks like being very, very upset. However, if we overlay it over the um, astrology, right at the beginning of the month, the moon goes into our third house, which is, uh, sorry, into our eighth house on the third of the month, which is Aquarius. And so if we look at it from that point of view, then it starts to read something different. So this here, and actually, what I should also say, because it's going through my mind, so I'm going to put it straight. I've done this reading way back in June, but I specifically said to the cards, what's happening in August? 
so these are not reading me now they're reading me in the future and the Aquarius as the eighth house says secrets things that are buried very deeply things that are fearful mm, I almost feel like they've got a Scorpio energy to them in that they're too deep to cry you know they're so painful you can't even go there but I think when we read it from the point of view of that that moon, because the moon will always be the strongest driver, I think, in a um, a Cancerian reading, because we're so in tune. It's like with a crab in the tide, you know, we just get swept. So if we look at what the um, new moon uh, signifies, it says, right, OK, those things that we have been holding for a long, long time, are we ready to release them? And here this says, absolutely you are so think about what i said here about little girl right little girl comes up lots of times in this reading it's really clear to me that says little girl because this says this might be something that you've been holding on to either when it, if it was related to childhood or maybe something that makes you feel like a frightened little girl um because cancerians we do take things personally, don't we? We can be very oversensitive. We overthink things. I think also, mm, I always say to people that I, I watch lots and lots of these videos, A, to prepare for these videos, but also just to really see how other people read. And one of my favourite readers is a lady called Amber Khan. She does The Quietest Revolution and uh, she is cancer rising so she has a tremendous um, grasp of what it means to have cancer running through you and she talks about how cancerians can be very psychic and uh, nobody had ever said this to me before but it really made sense she said it, it, really, it makes her laugh that people go oh they'll have a dream about a rabbit and then two weeks later, they'll see a rabbit and they'll be like, oh, how funny, about a rabbit. I dreamt about a rabbit. She says, they never quite gra grasp that cancerians feel things two weeks before they happen. So you're constantly, it's like you've been in the flow, bef in the waves a long time before you reach the beach. So the chances are that with this new moon, the, sorry, this full moon, Bring something up that you think, oh, I, this has been bothering me for ages. I knew this was coming. I knew something bad was around the corner and this was what was around the corner. So I think it's really important if you start to feel like, oh, my goodness, I'm really feeling like that frightened little girl. Frightened little boy, obviously, if you are male. But to me, that reads frightened little girl. If you're fe feeling like that frightened child, know that... It's the moon playing tricks on you and it's bringing it up because it wants you to take it to this place here, which is Rose. Right. So bear in mind as well, the, the key words that come up with these oils, you are protected. You are admitting there is a problem. Yeah, that you um, Marjoram says, don't worry about everybody else's stuff. Black pepper also says that that it, we'll get to that in a myth, in, in a little while. There is a lot of stop worrying about everybody else when you read the cards this way, but this says don't measure yourself against everybody else. What's important is you. And if the, even if this feels really insignificant to if you said it out loud, then you'd feel embarrassed of it. That doesn't matter. What's in, matter is that you feel it. Now we're going down here to. The queen of healing she is the queen of heaven if you haven't read my my rose book i really would recommend that you do not only because i wrote it and that will pay me some money but mainly because i cannot tell you what an important healing energy the uh, divine feminine the sacred feminine but particularly through the um the fragrance of rose it's so important so the rose is the symbol the incarnation as i say of the queen of heaven so if we looked at that from uh, an ancient perspective we might say aphrodite venus obviously it's red it's ruled by venus isis inanna ishtar we can also say that it is the virgin mary energy although to be honest i i personally feel that the virgin mary, mary energy is more a white rose than a pink rose and of course, the oil comes from pink rose, but it is divine, sacred, feminine energy. 
and it's absolutely grace. And the Queen of Heaven is the, um, the goddess of love, fertility and of war. And whilst there isn't warring factions here, this feels like the trauma of war from before, from when you were little or from something that makes you feel little. And it's interesting, actually, I, I did, had a meeting with one of my uh, colleagues who uh, we do we do coaching with each other. And she said, I'm so fascinated to see how you talk about eucalyptus, because it is an oil that people only ever think of as um, an antibacterial, antimicrobial, all of that stuff, clinical. But eucalyptus says to thy known self be true. And it really reminds me. As I work with it more, because it's not an oil that I used to work with hugely. I did only used to use it from, for clinical. But it also it almost reminds me of <clears throat> the rugby players doing the hacker. You know, when the, the, the New Zealand All, uh, the All Blacks come out and they do the hacker and they say, this is me. And don't dare even think that you would. Don't even think of trying to put me in any other category. I am so proud of who I am, of my heritage. And that's very much eucalyptus energy. That's very much mm, um, Australasian energy. Um, Antipodean, that was the word I was trying to say. They, you know, the, you stand tall about who you are. So I think it coming out here says just don't swallow it this time. Remember that this is an oil for a cough. Yeah. And coughs are um, often to do with throat chakra energy. I will plug another book because it's relevant here. If you are interested in that idea, then I've written a whole book about it, about bronchitis, because that's me. That's my weakness. And funny that it comes out in the reading that's for me. But if you feel like you can't say it, then you start to get hoarse. You start to get sore throats. You start to cough. And it's like your truth can't quite make it out of your throat and funnily enough what would we use we would use eucalyptus so eucalyptus says enough speak your truth and maybe maybe that's only to you maybe it doesn't need to be to anybody else it's about owning this secret that lead, that uh, lies here um and this again is an oil that is turning up so often I, I mean mathematically really what I should do is get Andrew my son to do a, um, a statistical analysis of how many times each card comes out because probability says they should all come out at the same time doesn't it but um, no Cedarwood Virginian hasn't come up in your reading and it's the only one it hasn't come up and Cedarwood Virginian says uh, determina determination and deliberate Petty Grant says do it consciously um, so kind of the same thing, really. But bear in mind that Cancerians, they're cardinal signs, you know, cardinal signs are clever. They're quick witted. They've got good business minds. But we don't we're not thought led. We're intuition led. So this says, yeah, you follow your con intuition, but take it that one step further and, and kind of draw it into the conscious um mind and the conscious body especially if you start coughing i mean that says cough that says cough that kind of says um infection but to me that reads no that this is you you self-sabotaging yourself here not owning the things that you're feeling and this says try and bring it into the conscious mind get calm get calm meditate Take it down a notch. Try and bring the energy that's going around your head down into the physical body. Try and marry the two up because Betty Bear would always do that. Remember, I referred to this here. This it has kind of the same energy as this from the point of view that this says stop worrying about everybody else. But I think that this when this starts to come through. It is um, relating to something else that's happening um, at the same time as all of this. So Mercury goes into Leo um, on the 5th, which is our second house. And that's money and finance and um, talents, basically. But also then later, Mars goes into our 10th house. Um, and that is vocation. 
it's not the hmm, sixth house really is to do with your day-to-day -day, uh, career how you earn your living but the tenth house where mars is is to do with the legacy that you leave behind you know the stuff that you're passionate about that becomes um, naturally to you and feels like your vocation and what you give to the world you know so as this healing's coming through maybe you start to feel well god that really hurt or i learned something from that and i feel that that was really important and i want to help other people do that perhaps and this says don't listen to everybody else this is you concentrate on what you want to do because but maybe for example you're a bit of a loony like i am who decides to dress up as the sun and, and do a youtube channel Everybody else looks at you as if you're bonkers. And I'm sure that maybe you looked at me as if I was bonkers. But if you're still listening to me here, shows that something I probably had something to offer you. And that's the energy that I'm seeing here. Don't listen to everybody else. Maybe as well. Remember, this is the little girl. Maybe the going back to that space in your mind brings back a talent or something. You thought, I've always wanted to do that. You know, when I was little... I was always in the ballet studio or I was always playing with my pattern bricks or skipping or I really loved doing that. And going back there has really healed me and I'd like to bring that back. You know what I would like to bring back? Cat's Cradle. <laughs> I've watched the kids in lockdown and I loved playing one-to-one -one with another little girl playing Cat's Cradle. And of course they can't do it at the moment, can they? And I've felt a real loss for cat's cradle so maybe that's that energy but you know that feeling of oh, there's just something missing in the world you know and i feel that i can give that and this says right okay well then get off the path where you're worrying about everybody else and look forward this is your path i always see this as the path forward you know how it grows says right this is x marks the spot and where that falls off that's where you're supposed to be and um Think of the energy of the black pepper. It's not cool energy, is it? It's feisty and fiery. And actually, though, it's not ruled by Mars. It's ruled by Venus. Venus tempers Mars. You've got this beautiful balance of being driven, but not being, well, arsy, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think if, if you, you might, if you were being a bit um, antagonistic or a bit too big for your boots, I'd be more likely to see th something like Laurel coming up. This says, no, absolutely, this is the right pathway for you. Follow your intuition and listen, listen, listen. And look what that leads to. That leads to delight, euphoria, maybe great sex, you know. <laughs> look how beautiful she is. She's dripping, isn't she, you know. And when you take, when you become, when you get into the flow of the universe and you're absolutely where you're supposed to be and you're absorbed and passionate about something, and that's sexy, isn't it? You know, so maybe good sex. But I think, I think more likely it's, I am so loving what's happening here. Now, when we read it from that point of view, these cards say something different. They do say, go to sleep, lady. <laughs> they also say, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. Both of them say that because chamomiles always sing to me. But it's soothing, it's releasing. So we can use the essential oils like that to soothe how angry we feel, how um, inflamed our skin is, how um, flaky and red our skin is, how inflamed our joints are. And of course, if any of those rise up, then of course these are your cards. But to me, this also says, but this, this you've led this here yourself. You can see how this is gonna feel. And remember, I always say, look at the stem. You know, it's so thin and wispy and the leaves are wispy, but you never see chamomiles broken off. They just lie back and go with the flow like that. So imagine lying back on the grass and looking up at the clouds and just, <sighs> you know, and the time slows down and you just think, wow, I wish every minute could be like that. Well, you've got two cards there that say that, yeah you can make that happen either with the essential oils but also more likely with this journey that this full moon on the third of the month and it's lucky that we've got this reading so early on she says smugly 
because that that seems to me to be the intention that needs to be put into this full moon of right i am going to let go of this and i'm sure that you know what this is i know what this is i know the secrets that i can't speak i know the things that i wouldn't dare say out loud what's really interesting here is there's nothing that says mercury here normally when mercury com uh, comes up i say um things the speed of things in your mind is very quick but as you try and write them down they become more solid and it comes slower you try and put it into practice it's harder so to me that says mercurial medicine but it's not here it just basically says to me make the decision acknowledge you feel little acknowledge that you don't need it anymore it's outdone and it's it's gone it's just gone you know which is just so nice and remember what i said here this card this card relate to where you come into they tie together all the time i always see that and so you tell me when the full moon comes up and you think what am i dealing with is it a trust issue mine will be a trust issue mine is definitely has been simmering under the um under the skin for many many months now uh, not necessarily related to a person it could be to a situation i mean it's difficult isn't it think about where we are at the t in at this moment in time how do we start trusting to go back into society what will be the the definition of the moment where we say yeah i'm going to hug that person or i'm going to hug that person how are we going to make those rules because these rules are funny they're really amusing me everybody's got their own set of rules aren't they and you watch people on uh facebook for example and their set of rules can be really different to yours and you think oh <laughs> they'd be appalled by my set of rules but their theirs are just ridiculous too you know everybody's got their own set of rules haven't they so i feel that maybe it's to do with that but probably it's to do with um maybe a person i think this feels like a person but also maybe it's to do with this that you trust yourself that you think well yeah we're gonna do this now this is such a beautiful card if we think put it next to that that's the queen of heaven that's the sacred feminine the great mother the melissa was also the great mother so how we read this, can we can either say the Melissa was um, the, the bee goddess, so the sacred um, female entity, so maybe Sibeli, um, Demeter core, but also her priestesses were called Melissa. So they were, um, they helped the supplicants, the people who were praying or pleading for help or offering favour to access the queen of heaven the god the great mother and they were powerful powerful women but i think that it's really important to know <laughs> so i'm getting the word virgin so let me explain the word virgin so in our society we say virgin is a, a, a woman who has uh, not yet had sex but in the old way in the way of talking about the melissa the the, the virgin was a lady who had been purified so she the melissa for demeter core in particular were married women with children and they would separate themselves off for a week before their uh, big festivals of which there were a lot actually they did seven festivals a year and some of them were enormous festivals so they were busy wealthy ladies you know powerful ladies in their own right they had their own vocation they had been married probably be strategically by their family by um to men who could um help their power but they were powerful women in their own right they didn't need a man so for example they were in charge of uh building the temples building uh creating the festivals daft as it seems making sure that the costumes were up to um up to scratch so that what you saw at a festival was what played out in the the mythology that you saw in front of you and for everybody who uh gave a sacrifice they had to pay the melissa um for that service you know they were well uh, paid for their services and then they invested 
great deal of money into making sure that the uh, what was called the police so the like the political center or the city or the town moved forward in the graces of uh, the goddess but also politically you know so these were powerful powerful women and This purification that they were talking, uh, that we talk about, as I say, they separated themselves off. They didn't have sex. They would uh, wash themselves in a particular way to make sure they were clean for the goddess. They would talk to the goddess um, and open. They would make sure that the fires were ready for the um, in the temple for sacrifices to be made. But this idea of the virgin meant that they stripped themselves clean. And this to me is what, what I'm saying here, that you have got to trust that letting go of this, this is something that's been holding you back. Remember the stalk, this is this belongs to there. And getting rid of this takes you to the new life. And the new life is full of money. It's full of money. Um, looking at your horoscope rather than your cards, you know, that... Um, we see uh, good finances, we see investments, we see learning, we see study. Everything's to do with progression forward in a new way. And I think it's absolutely lovely. But there is one, um, two things that I wanted to highlight. And I need to be careful because I'm going to run out of time. I want you to be really careful of what's going on um, between the 13th and the 24th, right? The 13th and the 24th, we get some really difficult astrology and it's right. Everybody's going to feel it and you're going to feel it. Mars is going to come into a very harsh alignment with uh, Capricorn in your seventh house. Also, the black moon, uh, the black moon is in a strange conjunction to Mars, too. So the black moon is the uh, fourth new moon in a season. So we've talked about that new moon, haven't we? Um that's going to be finances, investments too. So, um, but what you, I think you're going to feel is power struggles probably here. This is probably what this is. And there's going to be issues with power and control. I want you to use it as, as an opportunity to be part of the solution rather than the problem. So every time something comes up, think, what am I learning here? Do not always go at it with aggression. This is saying, remember, that they have their pathway. This is not your pathway. This is your pathway. So just keep thinking, right, how do I get this dynamic right? Because this is a lasting dynamic. What, what they learn from me about how I'm going to move forward and what I'm going to accept at the moment will set the boundaries for a long, long time ahead. <clears throat> Remember also what um, ylang ylang means. It means balance. You know, it means flower of flower, but it balances hormones. Everything's in balance when you do um, your langy lang. So think about what's fair to them, what's fair to me. And every time, make sure you say what's fair to me at the end of it. Because as Cancerians, we're not very good at that. We say what's fair to them and then forget us. So remember where X marks the stop, where, what's fair to me. So just be careful because... Remember, everything's happening in um, Capricorn. That's, that's our opposite sign. So we could definitely be the antagonists here. So just stay calm, stay calm, stay calm, stay calm, stay calm. Yeah? All of the way through. The other thing is that in the eighth house, um, we might find that pets can be a bit of an issue. And I picked this up off um, a reading that um, Annie Botticelli did. <clears throat> to make sure I hadn't missed anything and uh, she was quite convinced that uh, this month it might be that pets bite and stuff like that so I'm going to do something um, that I don't usually do I'm going to post a link to another video that belongs to a suite that Gergle Halodi and I did when we did um, Beyond the Essential or Recipe Summit in uh, 2018. It's by a lady called Caroline Ingraham and she uses essential oils to um, help pets. And it's a, just the most beautiful video. So I'm going to post the link for you there, but I'll also have a look on my um, own web page. So you'll see the link there. You'll be able to see your recipe slides. You'll be able to see the link to Caroline's video. 
um, but also I'll give you a link to buy the summit if you think well I absolutely love that and there are 60 different videos from various different authorities so you might find that really fascinating but I think as a as an extra now I've seen that I think there's essential laws that can definitely help so that's really interesting so rather than pointing out your um different connections now I'm just going to put them on the slides for you because I think that was a really in-depth reading and I don't want to have to uh, put things splice things together but I think it's absolutely beautiful uh, energy and easier energy you know these eclipses have <laughs> put us through the ringer haven't they you know they, they've been flowing in our language of emotions but they have been really hard work and I think that once we've worked through this got a bit of an easier time ahead to be honest and all this is vocation money 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 lovely 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 so hopefully you found that interesting and helpful if you would like to get your own tongue of the trees um box of cards obviously i'd love you to do that it pays for my work here I'm going to put a link to my website below and you'll be able to see where to be able to get those from um, and also if you want to go more deeper into the uh, reading and start to understand the medical astrology and the elements the Ayurvedic and the um, traditional Chinese medicine as well as the chakras and the blending you might also want to buy the knowledge base that goes with it the knowledge base is a digital um, platform it's like an online set of videos where i talk you through absolutely every aspect of the different essential oils so there's around about 40 videos it's a separate purchase but obviously it's an immediate download if you want to be able to access that so thank you if you also want to have your own reading please do check out my website thesecrethealer.co.uk and um, book yourself an hour-long consultation and I will do you your own reading for the meantime I'm going to say goodbye say goodbye to the sun goddess because next month it will be the Melissa the goddess the priestess that officiated at Demeter Kors, um festival of the autumn in ancient Greece the mysteries of Eleusis see you in Melissa land So you get your phone and turn it this way up and then there's a little red subscribe button. Turn it grey by clicking it. And then there's a little bell. Click that and press all and at the bottom of your phone or tablet or computer it will say you will receive all notifications. And then there's a little hand with a thumbs up. Click that, it'll turn it blue and it says added to your liked videos. And there will be comments. And if you want to, you can send a comment or, and say like hi to mum and dad like. And then the link to the next video will be in the description below underneath the video. So bye.